My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Slay the Spire. It's time to go in standard da, 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 ascension. Now, look, I am clad, but dude, guy, friend, pal. We need to get this achievement, right? -o? Choose a red card to obtain. Give me feed. Boom. There. Oh, mm, that's not. Mm. All right, let's go ham. I haven't done a fiend fire deck in a billion years. Turn it down every single time I see it as well. So it's time to make it back up to it. Uh. Ooh. Now that's what I call a line left to right in the midsection. Uh, sure. 25 for 21. We do need to upgrade that fiend fire as soon as is possible. Uh, I do want uppercut in the deck. Yeah. I'm taking it basically as a value pick though. All but kill the back line. But I'm taking the uppercut as a value pick, basically so that I have a good card in my deck after I burn the rest of my... Hmm. I don't think I take the corruption before dead branch, but I'll take it immediately after. All right. Feel no pain. Whenever a card is exhausted, gain four block. Good. That means that our fiend fire turns are going to be a heck of a lot of block for us. Uh, we'll remove a defend because they're the things that we're going to burn out of this deck. It's going to be as aggressive as, we, as aggressive as we can possibly make it. All right. Get myself 16 block there. Don't mind if I do. Basically, the core challenge of running this deck is going to be managing our resources being our re remaining cards in the deck. And that's going to be really not simple. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on that one. I was really hoping for a bash in that hand would make this one hand much easier. Oh, well. Bash Strike wasn't going to kill there. We'd leave him on three HP. HP. HP, not H. H. I believe I said that wrong. Um, None of that, though. So we're in a weird position here. Where as soon as I cast that Fiend File, I'm probably going to be burning most of... Oh, wow. No, never mind. Fiend Fire and... That are later on. Beautiful. I was about to say, I'm probably going to be burning some of the best cards out of my deck, but no. Uh, I drew my uppercut and my bash. Well, actually, I do want to burn my bash, but never mind. Uh, Feel No Pain makes this such a good fight for us. Because the days that are in our deck are just four block apiece. Um, handy little thing for us. As long as I play a defense here, I actually fully block. Beautiful. Three days in the next hand, so we've already got full block next turn. Fly forever. Strawberry, raise your max HP by seven, and... No, I just need card draw so that I can fill a hand before I fiend fire, so that I can use fiend fire more reliably as a finisher. Pandib, every tenth attack you play deals double damage. That's going to enable our fiend fire to be very potent, very potent indeed. It's not fiend fire time yet. It wouldn't have even defended us against much damage that turn. Also not fiend fire this turn, this turn. Instead it's uppercut strike. A 
beautiful. Immolate is another way to exhaust cards. Do I want to do... I always struggle with a Fiend Fire deck, right? Unless I have way too many cards, what am I doing? But I don't want any of these. What do they do for us? Unceasing top. If you have no cards in hand, during your turn, draw a card. That means that Fiend Fire is actually going to thin our deck for us uh, and draw a card. Suddenly, Fiend Fire is not so bad. Next turn, Fiend Fire would be really good. Rough. I don't want to burn Uppercut. Alright, so I'm probably going to Uppercut this first turn. Yeah, Uppercut Strike. That also has the bonus of giving some weakness. Alright, draw, uh, draw Fiend Fire in the next hand, we'll kill. Or not, that's fine too. Fiendfire still kills this hand. Here we go. We'll do the strike first though, so that we get closer to our next charge of pen nib. Oh. We want zero cost cards, I guess. And exhaust cards? <sighs> Man. I, I'm super unfamiliar with this deck archetype. That's got to be painted all over my face right now. It actually makes me a little bit uncomfortable to play it because I just don't know what's going on. Which I think is part of the reason why I avoid uh, Fiend Fire so heavily. Right, come on and slam and welcome to the jam. I guess if I could engineer a way to use Fiendfire to burn all of my cards out, save four cards that cost zero, I could be in a good position. Fiendfire would be 80 damage right now. I just have to give up my Feel No Pain, Spot Weakness, and 2 Strikes. So my deck becomes Bash, Uppercut, 3 Defends, and 2 Strikes. That's actually probably fine. Yeah. 80 is a lot of damage to start with. Defends, drink a potion, defend again. I do pretty much just have to uppercut every time it's available. Get that weakness going. Yeah, this isn't gonna really work, is it? Because I don't have the ability to defend while attacking with this. And I already burned my finisher. But my... <sighs> That's the problem I have with, in general, uh, Fiendfire. Do you, if you use it as a finisher, <sighs> Fiendfire blows up my brain. I'm, I'm dead here as well. Just gone. Right, kill me. I don't understand how to use Fiendfire in a deck that doesn't already have a ridiculous amount of refill, like Dead Branch. I just don't. Because if, I, if, if you're going to use it as a finisher, aren't you just carrying it as dead weight until you have it? That would have been much better, mind, if we'd picked up a Battle Trance or some other zero-cost heavy draw so that we could play along with the Pink Fire. Uh, but we didn't get that offered. Try that one again. All of these are pretty uninviting. I'm actually going to go for the random boss relic, see if I get something cool. 
Okay. Black Star, elites now drop two relics when defeated. And I, I typically elite hunt. Anyhow. There's a four elite path. It's a juicy little bit of extra relics on the first floor. Three strikes next hand is a kill. Why? Great. We're just short of a kill here, by the way, as well, by one damage. Game, please. Three strikes? Why? Uh, all these stalling tactics just die. Uh, no. I can't really take anything yet until I get a card to defeat some bosses. Rage Carnage. I'm literally just straight up taking those two so that I have the ability to defeat elites. Upgrade rage, uh, Carnage as soon as possible and Rage probably as well. Remove all of my defense. That's a curse. If I had the ability to choose not to roll that wheel because of the curse, I probably wouldn't. I would probably choose to never roll that wheel. by a cultist. There's only one rest on this path, so Searing Blow doesn't really work in this deck. Move a card from a deck. Well, there goes that DK. Okay. Brow, brow. Really wanted Bash in that opening hand and then Carnage in the second one. Unfortunately, if I don't cast Carnage, I lose Carnage, so... Guess we have a Carnage opening now. This fight, as I've mentioned a billion times before, is... Freaking hell! Stop giving me Carnage and Bash in the same hand, please! Uh, is a DPS race. So I'm pretty much just going to be throwing damage in at every available opportunity. One damage short of a kill there. Pen nib, every 10th attack you play deals double damage. An ancient T set, whenever you enter a rest site, start the next combat with extra two energy. And none of those, thank you very much. Immediately upgrade this carnage. Eight more damage. Pretty significant. Bash Carnage opening hand. I didn't even dare to ask, but that's exactly what I wanted right there because we had the extra two energy from the Ancient T-Set. All right, Toolbox. At the start of each combat, add a random color that's card to your hand as well as Mummified Hand. Whenever you play a power, a random card in your hand costs zero for the rest of the turn. An energy potion. I'm actually considering the Burning Pact here as a way to burn defenses out of my deck. Unceasing top, whenever you have no cards in hand, you're in your turn, draw a card. Uh, interesting. Again, um, still not sure I can use it. All right, give me Carnage again. I'm actually going to really try for it. Give me Carnage again. Because it would have been enough damage to kill there. All right. Bag of Marbles. At the start of each combat, apply one vulnerability to all enemies, as well as the Blood Vial. At the start of each combat, heal 2 HP. None of those. Upgrade a card. Don't mind if I do. Burning Pact and Rage are both due for an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Rage Carnage the front line. Strike the back. Beauty. 
And it's pretty much easy kill with any hands. No. We're good with what we got. Thank you very much, though. Hmm. Don't mind if I do. Actually, get a burning pack to the bash. Looking for carnage. Now, Disarm burns itself out of our deck. Pommel Strike draws a card, but if we lower the cost of our deck and increase our amount of energy, we don't actually have to care about card draw literally ever. The Burning Pact at this point, because I took it before the Unceasing Top, all it's actually going to function to do is burn negatives out of my deck. All right, keeping vulnerability on you for another turn. Shouldn't have cast that second attack there. That was entirely my bad. Uh, I instead would have had a double damage carnage there. Throw an explosive potion to perfect that fight. Or a calcum gives us six block at the end of a turn if we haven't blocked. Or rather, if we have no block at the end of the turn. All these smooth stone at the start of each combat. Game one decks. And none of those. We'll upgrade the rage because I intend on removing that bash from the deck. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now we can rage, bash. I'm not going to strike here because I don't want to start splitting you yet. I want to split you next turn. Hopefully with a carnage. There it is. Beautiful. So now your segments only have 21 HP. Still perfect right now. Easy. Feed. Now we have to take the feed here because not only is feed really, really good uh, and we want greater maximum HP, all these good things, right? Uh, but also don't do a decker on the final floor. Take the Philosopher's Stone. We're planning not to really let our opponents attack at all, so. I see a three elite path. Yeah, three elite appears to be the maximum. Yeah. Obviously, we're going for every elite because we have the black star. We're going to be using Dark Shackles here just to try and get a charge of artifacting off of our enemy. Now, I've got to keep an eye on this pen nib at all times. At absolutely all times. Really unfortunate. A lot of damage taken there. We'll feed for the kill. We do take Clash. It's not going to like weigh us down because the unceasing top, right? Shuriken is good. Is it? So Enlightenment's good in a hand where I just draw it and I have... And I have my Carnage in that hand. And if I top deck it with the Unceasing Top, it's nothing. Now, you know what they add the correct play is? It's Rage Trip Card Removal. And we remove the Bash. So Trip is effectively our Bash now. But the upgraded version of it is going to be way better for us. Because it hits all enemies. Uh, and the rages, obviously, are ridiculous for us. We'll burn this rage, though, because we need to draw more damage right now.
Do Fiend and then feed. Hell yeah. Uh, no. None of that. Thank you. No. A curse is just too big and negative in this deck. Sure, we have a burning pack to possibly burn it, but if we don't get the burning pack, then our opening hand, that's just, it's too much. No, none of those, though. Thank you very much. All right. This is going to be a real test for us. Now, Carnage Feed, I think, is a kill, right? Yeah, on literally any one of them. But I'm not guaranteed to kill the Slaver afterwards, and I do want to kill the Slaver first, so... Even though it wastes some damage to do it in that order... Really? Could we give me a strike there? We would have killed the Frontliner. Okay. Just get a second defense. Beautiful. We can perfect this. Sure, we got wounds in the deck, but burn them straight out. Double rage. And hell yeah. Well, the annoying thing is if I play the defend, the Orichalcum doesn't trigger, and both of them give me six block anyway. So uh, I can weaken you. And now I'm still perfecting the fight. I really did want to perfect that fight. All right, Prayer Wheel. Non-boss chest now also contain cards. Eh. Brag of preparation. At the start of each combat, draw two additional cards. That is actually huge for us. Our opening hand is actually now six cards large between the toolbox and the extra two cards from Bag of Preparation. But even better than all of that is that with the Ancient Tea set, our opening hand for every boss, because a boss always occurs after a rest site. Not elites, but bosses always occur after a rest site is going to have the extra energy to cast all of these extra cards we have. We'll upgrade that feed so we can get more max HP. Ooh, this one's a wee bit rough. Let's trip you. I should just do Burning pack to defense. Yeah, because we're using the rages as our defense. Should have used the... Should have used the clash with the double tap there. The double damage. It's the same if I play a defense there or not. So I've now taken damage in this fight. So I've already broken the seal on that. So now I don't really care. Give me carnage. And now get me feed. Feed. Uh, well, we're not going to feed then. Centennial Puzzle. The first time you lose HP each combat, draw three cards and meet on the bone. If your HP is at or below 50% at the end of combat, heal 12 HP. All of that is really good. Extra upgraded Clash for the deck as well. Sundial. Every three times you shuffle, uh, shuffle your deck, gain three energy. Uh, between Sundial and un uh, Unceasing Top, you can actually have an infinite much more easily. Because every three times you shuffle your deck, you're going to get two energy. So as long as you can ignore your energy cards or only have like one energy card, you can cycle through your deck a whole bunch of times before you'll run out of energy. While I could put Havoc in my deck, I'm not going to. 1 of 20? Right. Well, here's the crummy thing. I don't really want any of these. I guess the Clash. I was really hoping for either... Another Rage, an Anger, another Feed, those kinds of things, right? Or an Offering. Offering was actually the card I was specifically hoping for. Super Relic, sure. Darkstone Perry up. Whenever you obtain a Curse, heal your max HP by 6, sure. Alright. 
Thank you, Panache, for being amazing. Now we'll clash the back line. Then feed there. So I've still taken no damage, courtesy of using that final attack. Sure, I did lose my feed, but sacrifices have to be made. That's what I was worried about, that I would draw Carnage at the wrong time. I'm still going to use my energy potion so that I can cast it here, though. Because I didn't want to make it ethereal. Eh, it looks like I would have been fine either way. Sorry, it was ethereal, so it would have burnt out of my hand. I didn't want to exhaust it. Regal Pillow with a Singing Bowl! When Avidin cards to your deck, you may choose to gain 2 max HP instead. Don't mind if I do. It's just max HP from here on out. Another wheel, I don't want to do it! Oh, never mind, it removes a card from my deck. Alright, so we're actually fine for the wheel over the course of this run. That's been handy. Uh, we'll remove the defense now. The defense, we have rages. They're our defense. Speaking of... Actually, I'm pretty sure if I go all backline here, I can kill. No, that's not true, is it? 21, 7, 28, 18, the, uh, 46. It's not enough. Okay. Never mind. I knew I had a reason that I would be able to kill Pendium on the second hit. Didn't even, didn't even remember it. That's okay. We can just wait until we get the feed on the right time to hit this mystic. Feed. Can't cast that. There we go. Even with the reckless charge, I don't want to put that in my deck. Thank you very much, though. Take that max HP. Here, we're going to upgrade the trip to be vulnerability to all enemies because we're actually going to have to destroy your chumps in this fight. A, a pop? A, 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 a pop? Oh, oh, a pop. Apotheosis. It's pretty good. All right. That was a pretty good opener. I feel okay about that one. There's a bunch of draw for us. Burning pack to defend. Rage. Double defense. Clash. Clash. Feed's just not going to be enough. I don't need to draw back into it. We use the explosive potion, then feed. Right, there's our max HP. And now we get to keep the pen nib for the first thing on the next floor. Take none of those. Thank you very much. Uh, nope. Velvet Choke would super limit me. Uh, the Calling Bell would super limit me as well, although it would give me 16 max HP. Uh, I guess we're taking the Astrolabe and we're trying to burn three of these defense out of our deck. We got a Corruption, a Spot Weakness, and a Whirlwind. The problem with the Corruption is it'll burn the Rages out of my deck, and I actually kind of want those. Don't know a Decker. Donu and Decker. Donu and Decker. Donu and Decker. Donu and Decker. Donu. Donu. Donu and Decker. Donu and Decker. Donu and Decker. Feed. 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 Donu. Feed. Feed. Donu. 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 Feed. Feed. Donu. Feed. We're going to try. All right. I'm going to give myself the best chance that I have of picking up Dead Branch before we get to that final fight. Bye. Got an upgrade of corruption. Dead branch is all I need. As much as I do want to just whirlwind here for the kills. I, 
also really want to feed on one of them. Did I not get anything from that feed? Did I did I do that wrong? What just happened there? Upgraded clash. Don't know when Decker are gonna put dazes in my deck. They're gonna put dazes in my deck. They're gonna put, uh, I need to get fewer clashes. I can't have all these clashes. Don't know when Decker are gonna put dazes in my. I my brain is gone. It does not work. Some would say any more. Some others would be less charitable about it and say. It never did. Got a dex for an explosive. Definitely take a flex. Extra strength is good. But we should trigger Panache every turn. It's extra AoE damage. Also, Panache has the bonus of making another card in my hand cost zero because of the mummified hand. Bad opening turn. Not a great follow up, though. Should have just cast those uh, clashes. Well, now I have to lose an explosive potion. Blue candle, curse cards can have you played, and pair. Raise your max HP by 10. Anything I desperately need to upgrade left in my deck? Panache, yeah. Also, as a courtesy of coming... Courtesy of... Uh, specifically because I came to this rest site, I'm going to go into this elite fight with two extra energy. Time to corrupt my entire deck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that one. Really? Wouldn't have done anything. And I already lost my feed. Matroshka next to chess you open contain two relics as well as paper frog enemies with vulnerability take 75% more damage rather than 50% both really good we'll also take anger here bottle tornado upon pickup choose a power card in the start of each combat that will be owned uh, that will be in your opening hand there we go I would take another clash but I'm not going to I'm going to take a copy of Intimidate, actually. Because it's going to help me remove the artifacting on Dono and Decker. Uh, War Paint upgrades Rage and Intimidate. Perfect. And the Bottle Tornado will put the Panache in my opening. Because I don't have a dead branch yet. <laughs> Apotheosis. Oh, cool. Apotheosis now costs zero. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have cast it that turn, to be honest. I did that in a horrifically wrong order. And unfortunately, it matters. Because I didn't draw a clash there. Mm -hmm. All right. 
I wanted to hold on to my pen nib for the next... Oh my god, extra energy ridiculously. Uh, every three turns, gain an extra energy. And on the first turn of each combat, gain one energy. Those are huge. Evolve. Evolve? 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 Evolve is free to play for us because it'll make something else cost less, courtesy of the uh, the mummified hand. And if our deck does get filled with days, at the very least, this will draw all of them out of our deck for us. I don't want the bandices. Do I want the bandices? I want the bandices. <clears throat> Yeah. I need to upgrade both of Madness's mind, but they are fine. Uh, all right. Carnage. Deck potion doesn't do anything for us. What is that? What is that? What is that? Anger? Anger. All right. Here's our last chance to get that dead branch. Seventy-seven damage. It's pretty good hit. Mori, negate the next two curses you obtain, and a strawberry. Raise your max HP by seven. Another rage. All right. Now, the thing is, I am going to be trying to engineer this so that I, uh, I get what I'm looking for, specifically being uh, feeding on Donu. I am more than happy to die in the attempt to do so. Because this is the first time I've actually had a setup get kind of ready for it. I'll upgrade one of the madnesses so that my hands flow more. Now, usually, you would kill Decker first. Actually, I'm going to make sure. It is Udonu. Good. Usually, you would kill Decker first. But here, we are going to kill Donu first. Sorry. Usually, we'd kill Donu first. But here, we're going to kill Decker first. Right? Donu gives out all of the boss. Uh, Decker uses them. But we need to kill Decker. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's feed. That's feed. That's feed. I can't play that. That's feed. Regen potion. But we need to kill Decker and control Donu. That we, we intimidate, then we rage, then we trip, rather. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We are getting there. We're not going to use anger here because I don't want to put... I don't want to put more copies of anger in my deck because I'm just waiting until I get feed now. Burning that rage out of my deck there. Two hundred and fifty one damage. Victory achieved. I am so happy. That's it. That's literally the last thing I had to do in this game. So, of course, that means this is now the end of the series. My name has been. I'm kidding, obviously.
<sighs> Can you imagine? Uh, yeah. Well, that's the last, uh, where is it? Character stats. That's the last achievement we had to get done. We've done all of these over the course of this series. And we've seen everything. We've had a fastest victory at 11 minutes. 11 minutes? That's a pretty fast victory. So we've done speed running. We've done completion. Uh, we've done all of these kinds of different tactics. We've done the how to beat series. Good Lord, what haven't we done? Oh, played less than 458 hours. I'm so damn pleased with myself. I'm brimming. I, oh, I'm so happy. We finally did it. That's been hanging over my head for weeks. Ever since I was doing the speedrunning stuff. Well, now that we've done that, very soon, which is to say probably in the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at a couple of the mods that currently exist for Slay the Spire, for Mob the Spire specifically. Uh, the first one I plan to look at is the Juggernaut. Because the Juggernaut uh, is, in my opinion, the most... Uh, the most mechanically sound currently existing mod. I've played the Juggernaut, the Valiant, the Seeker, and the Necromancer. And that's probably also the order in which I would play them on the channel. Which isn't to say that I'm going to play all of them. I don't think I'm going to play, like, super, 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 super alpha content mods, right? Because that doesn't really make... Like, while it's new... Some of them are confusingly written or like the cards don't work as intended and that can be frustrating. So the ones that are more mechanically solid like the Juggernaut uh, and more mechanically interesting like the Juggernaut and the Seeker are the ones that I'm going to want to play more. For the moment though, my name's been Rhapsody. Your name, whatever it is, thank you for sticking around while we got all the achievements. We're going to do some mod stuff, interspace with normal runs, interspace with dailies. It's going to be everything. It's going to be fun. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.